Welcome to Lake Country Baptist Church. It's the first Sunday of the month, so we got birthdays and anniversaries. So if you celebrate a birthday this month, get you to stand up. Get one, two. All right. All right. They're slowly popping up. Slowly but sure. I ain't made it yet. Oh, I thought I said that. Love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Once again, good morning. Lake Country Baptist Church. It is good to see each and every one of y'all here this morning. Earlier, John said, Hey, well, it sound a little hoarse this morning. I said, Well, I'm doing better than I was Friday. I went into McDonald's Friday, going through the drive thru, going to get me a sausage biscuit before I went to work. A lady come on the intercom, said, Can I help you? And I said, Give me a sausage biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I told her, give me a sausage biscuit. <laughs> Sounded like alfalfa trying to order one that morning. God had given me, a, given me my voice back a little bit, and uh, I know that's not a lesson for some of y'all that have to listen to me all the time, but I am glad to be able to talk this morning. Amen. There you go. But anyhow, it is good to see each and one of y'all visitors. We're so glad to have y'all, and welcome you back any opportunity you have to come to visit with us. And if you have the opportunity and get here early enough, you know, 945, that's when our Sunday school hour starts. We'll be glad to have you for Sunday school. And if you, if you get that opportunity, come on down and join us for Sunday school at 945. Today, after our service, there will be someone standing at the back. There will be a love offering. We'll be taking up for Vincent and Angie Terry. Uh, also, we have a business meeting next Sunday at 5 p.m. before the service. A baby shower will be held Saturday, July 20th for Destiny Stone here at the church. All are welcome to join. Also, deacons meeting will be held every third Sunday at 5.15 p.m. Uh, the next one is July 21st. Also, on that same Sunday, July 21st at 6 p.m., Brother Alan Finley will be our guest speaker. A love offering will be taken up, and a snack fellowship will follow after the service. Any other announcements? We're going to have one, have one thank you card here. Wait a sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if y'all uh, look on the uh, uh, little table in the entryway, you'll see a basket with red, white, and blue uh, decoration on it. And inside that basket are toy soldiers. 
and Sister Cheryl brought this uh, last Wednesday, and there's a notepad beside that. And if you have a service person in your family or someone you know, we would like for you to write their name down and what branch of the military, if you know it, if you don't know their branch of the military, that's fine. Just write their name down so the, we as a church can pray for our, our uh, local military uh, people and, uh, and all of our military. But the little soldiers are in there for you to take with you. Take, take one soldier, when you write a name down, you don't have to write a name down, just take a soldier and place it in your house somewhere where you'll see it and pray for that, pray for our military. When you, when you see that little soldier. That's what that's there for. So that's what they're back uh, in the front for. So when you leave out, uh, if you have somebody you want to put their name down, put their name down and we'll begin to pray for that individual and then uh, pick up a toy soldier and, uh, and begin to pray for our military personnel. Amen. Great. We have a thank you card here. We would, what would we do without you? The family of Alice Griffith appreciate all your thoughts, visits, and prayers during the time she was so ill. Thank you to the ladies that prepared and served the food before the funeral. The service and food were excellent. Family of Alice Hill Griffith. Any prayer request? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Brother, last week I brought up a name of a friend of mine that's on his prayer list. It's uh, Jimmy McBloom is what's on here, and his name is Jimmy McBroom. Broom, okay, I misspelled that. that I was be... going to take a picture of this and send it to him to kind of encourage him. I didn't want to have his name that wrong. M-C-B-R-O-O-M? B, uh, McBroom, B-R-O-O-M. He, he was just diagnosed last month with uh, cancer and told he had two months to live. It just came out of nowhere for it, I know. But anyway, I want to get him on the list and church might pray for him today, as they do the other people on the list. I want to take a picture there with him. Get I'm sorry, that's my it. fault. I, I, I misspelled it. Send it. No, that, I'll probably just <coughs> say it clear enough. But I just want to send him a picture there so he'd be a little encouraged. Yeah. You know a little old church praying for him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Bud Farmer, my uncle, uh, he's in the hospital uh, with some pretty serious heart issues right now. Did you say John? Bud. Bud. Bud Farmer. Uh, Gail Angley, G A L E, A I N L E Y. That's uh, Sister Jody's dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan Williams is a little boy. Uh, his mom's a client of ours. Um, he's going in August the 10th to have a brain, tra uh, yeah, a brain surgery, something going on. Um, he has cancer, and after that, he's going to have to undergo um, chemo. They're going down to Dallas next month, so just keep the whole family in your prayers. Okay. Leslie Ship. She's going to have a kidney removed next week, this next coming week. Andrew Gibbs, um, he's really bad scoliosis. He's having surgery on Monday. Mm -hmm. Andrew Gibbs? Yes, yeah, he is. John? Um, Elizabeth Fields, she's on here already, but let's remember her. She was in a car accident. <coughs> And her top car was totaled, and she has a rental car now that is handicapped equipped. But she's going to have to have a new car, and she's really sore and just real stoked up from the airbags hitting her and bruising. But just remember her; she's in a lot of pain. Uh, Clinch won't let these people look pleasure. Lord Father, we pray that you lay your loving hands on these people, Lord God, that we've added to our list this morning, Lord. Uh, Lord God, you know their needs, each and every one, Lord God. We ask that you uh, that uh, their needs be met, Lord God. Father, we ask that you uh, 
Let your grace be shown in each need, Lord. In your great name we pray. Amen. Get y'all turn to page 406. Page 406. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse of the Solid Rock.
bless this offering. Lord, your foundation there. We thank you in the next time we do. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And this year, 
Uh, the girls raised $186.79. Well, I hate to tell you, but nothing's changed. The girls won again. <laughs> but the boys did make a better show in this year. They raised $166.28. And I saw something happen at the end of the VBS because some of the men decided they wanted some of the, the boys to win this year. And they started, the, the little offering plates were still out here, and they started throwing money in the offering plates. Well, there was a woman that saw that. And after they got through putting their money in, she tilted the, the scale just a little bit, and she put more money in. So anyway, they, they raised $100 the Sunday after VBS was over and didn't even know it. And so, uh, but their total for, to give the, uh, uh, the Gideon speaker is three hundred and fifty. Three dollars and seven cents, and that's going to go to toward buying a lot of Bibles to give to children. So thank you for that, and uh, we'll see that he gets that when he shows up uh, August the eleventh. Uh, Romans chapter fourteen, verses six through twelve. Now I don't have a title for today's message, so you can just give it any old title you want to. Uh, we're we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture today, and uh, so uh, get your Bibles ready and get your pens ready, and if you. If you have trouble finding these scriptures, just jot them down and you can look at them later on. Romans 14, <coughs> verses 6 through 12. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth unto to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, Every one of us shall give an account of himself <coughs> to God. Father, thank you for your word. Bless it to our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And help us to try our best to live, to be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you look at this, uh, this chapter right here, in, uh, beginning in verse uh, 1, Paul is talking about uh, disputes that people are having over the food, the types of food they eat, and not only the types of food and the foods that they eat, but also the days that they celebrate and the days that they don't celebrate. And you know what? These are kind of things that Paul needed to address, and I'm glad that he did, because let me tell you what. When Paul gets through with this, these issues that he addresses that seem so important to us for some reason turn into something that I call a petty issue. A issue that we make a, a, an example of, that we make a precedent that makes one, not one bit of difference in your walk with God. It don't have anything to do with anything. It don't have anything to do with God's command. It is something that we decide that we don't want to do and we don't want anybody else to do it or something that we don't want that we don't want anybody else to do or to know or to say. And we have to guard ourselves and be careful because we are all going to give an account to God for one thing and we got to be careful about these issues that we bring up that don't mean anything. Amen? Yeah. I have not ever had a dove in my mouth. How many of y'all ever ate uh, the breast of a dove, a bird? Any of you raise your hand? You know why I haven't? Because my mother, in her great wisdom, in her great love, decided that it was a sin to eat a dove. Now let me ask you a question. Is it a sin to eat a dove? 
It wasn't to me and it ain't to you, but it was to her. And so we never cooked a dove in our house and I have never tasted a dove because my mother said it was a sin. Now my mother's dead and gone now. So if I ever, you know why she thought it was a sin? Because her mother told her it was because the, uh, the Lord sent the dove out of the ark and it was a sacred bird. Well, let me tell you what, it ain't a sacred bird. All birds are sacred because they're all created by God and they're all put here for us to eat. Now, this seems like a, a silly issue, but you know what? If we're not careful, we can get a lot sillier than that. Yeah. Amen? Amen. But sometimes people say, one of my favorite holidays in, in, in my childhood was Halloween. Everybody just go ahead and go boo. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. You can boo all you want to. I trick-or-treated, and I had a good time, and I ate every bit of that candy. Amen? And let me tell you what. I've never worshipped Satan, not one stinking time. Amen. And I get so fed up with hearing people say, "Now nah, we can't do this, we can't do that, we ain't going to do this. That's, a, that's an unholy holiday, no it ain't. It's a day, according to Paul, and it's a day that the Lord has made, and if I want to go trick-or-treating, that's my business. Amen? Amen. And you know what the, 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 the Paul tells us, he goes on to tell us, we don't need to make these issues a stumbling block. And we don't. We don't, you know what? I take, I take <coughs> Sarah, my little granddaughter, I've taken her trick or treat twice. I didn't make an issue out of it. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't take her to one of the festivals that the churches has to, to replace Halloween. I didn't do any of that. And we had a, a, trick or, a trunk or treat here last year. And, and but y'all know why? We got to be careful about making, there's people that say, I ain't going to no church that does that. <laughs> You kind of take God out of the process of finding you a church by doing those things. There are people who don't believe in the Christmas tree. How many of y'all ever bowed down under a Christmas tree and worshiped the lights? How many of you have ever prayed, well, I better not ask this question, for gifts, because some of us did. <laughs> <laughs> but we prayed to God for all not for that tree or Santa Claus. <coughs> Amen. How many of us don't realize that Easter is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? It ain't got nothing to do with the Easter bunny, whether he's chocolate or real. That's right. I hunted Easter eggs when I was a kid and I ate them up. Now they don't even let you have real eggs. But that's okay. But a lot of people say we ain't supposed to do that. That's a pagan holiday, really. Easter's not a pagan holiday. And I worship the Lord my God on that day. There you go, man. I worship the Lord my God on Christmas Day. Right. And we have a tree. It ain't much of one, but we got one. Amen? <laughs> and it don't have one stinking thing to do with my relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Paul is addressing these issues, and he went on, you know, every letter he got that he writes to churches, he addresses issues and problems. <laughs> Glory to Paul. There's one thing I detest doing in the church is addressing issues. Because I have to guard my mouth. Because some people, when I say that's a petty thing, get very angry. Because to them it's not. Amen? Amen? But we also have to guard our own selves against making an issue that's not even scriptural, an issue of division in the church. Amen? Amen? This is what Paul's talking about. You can have all the issues you want. You can say, I'm not eating that, or I'm not going here, I'm not doing anything on this day. You can do all that you want. But don't govern another people's life and condemn them because they are doing what you want to do. Right. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so that's what he's talking about. And then he goes on, on to tell us these things and the, the things that we need to, to know about. We need to realize that every day and everything and every food belongs to God. Amen. Everything was made for Him, by Him, and by Him there was not nothing or anything made that was made. Everything was for Him. And everything that we have been given by God, we have been given on this planet to use to His glory. Amen? Amen. He has given us a, a food to eat, water to drink. He's given us medication. He's given us a lot of things. You know, this applies to the same kind of reasoning on a different scale that people won't even go to a doctor because they don't believe in them. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Huh? And we've all seen stories where people have died or let their children die because they refused a simple treatment that could have saved their lives because they thought it was a sinful thing. Amen. These are the issues that he's talking about here. And if we're not careful, that's the kind of church we'll be. We'll criticize. We'll look down our noses because people aren't acting just exactly the way we think they are to. Amen? Amen? Amen. Oh, it's getting quiet in here. <laughs> oh, I love it when it's quiet in here sometimes. Amen. So, so we, we know, need to know that everything is, it belongs to the Lord. Verse 8 sums it up really nice. For, for whether we live or whether we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die to the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. So let me tell you what. No matter what you eat, you're still the Lord's. No matter what day you celebrate, you're still the Lord's. Amen. Glory to God. We belong to the Lord. We don't belong to a petty world. We don't belong to the devil. And it's high time we quit living our lives like we belong to this world and we belong to Satan when we don't. We belong to Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you belong to Him and you're supposed to live for Him, Amen. not for this petty world. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so, he, the Bible says in verse 9, he goes a little further than that. He says, not only is He the Lord of everything, He's the Lord of, of everybody, whether they're alive or dead. Look in verse 9. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be the Lord both of the dead and the living. Let me tell you a secret. There is no one dead to God. Amen? You got to love them dead? They're not dead. They just ain't here. Amen? You know why? because they're back where they came from. Every one of us came from God. You believe that? If you don't, I feel sorry for you. Amen. Every one of us came from God. Every soul that ever entered into a body in this life came from God. And every soul, when it departs from this body and this life, goes back to the one who gave it. Amen. Right. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Mark that in your Bible. It's a good scripture. Amen. And so there is nobody dead to God. And Jesus Christ did something for the right to be the Lord of all of us. What did he do? He lived. Perfectly. He died. He suffered. He rose from the dead. He is alive. Amen. Glory to God. The only one that ever did it. And it gives him the exclusive right to be your God. Right. To be yeah. your Lord. He is the only one that matters. His opinion is the only one that counts. And when he says something wrong, it's wrong. I don't care what everybody else says. And when he says it's okay to do something, it's okay to do something. I don't care what anybody else says. He is our Lord and he is our God. Amen. And he has earned the right to be that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. None of the rest of us have. And so he goes on and he, and he, and he says this. And, and so instead of judging one another over petty issues like food, holidays, whether we have Easter baskets or, or what color the carpet's going to be when we ever change the carpet in here or what color the floor is going to be and, or what the building's going to look like back there, those are issues that don't make one bit of difference right. in our eternal salvation. Amen. Amen. And so he says, you need to listen to me. He says in verse 10, so why do you judge your brother? So why do we do that? Why do we make snide remarks about one another? Why do we publicly and openly sometimes tell somebody else what we don't like about a brother or a sister? Now, you know what? You know what causes more trouble in the Lord's church than anything else? And I, a lot of people say money. Well, it could be. There's a real close between number one and number two. And here's the way they fit. Number one and number two. Number one's either money or something else that's even as dangerous. Gossip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
There have been a lot of people who have not did not get up this morning and go to church because somebody opened their mouth and said something offensive to them over an issue that had nothing to do with Jesus Christ. No wonder the Bible tells us to guard our lips, to guard our tongue, to guard our heart. Paul says, I got something else you need to worry about. And I'm going to share it with you right now. Let me, let's go on. Oh, boy, this is going to get real good before it's over with. We don't need to judge one another over this stuff. Why? Look at what he says at the end of verse 10. For we shall all, everybody say all, all. stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And let me tell you what. When we've done wrong, he's going to let us know it. Right. Amen. And he's going to bring up issues that aren't petty. He's going to bring up issues that are absolutely, positively, 100% real that he didn't like. <laughs> he's not only going to bring up the things he didn't like, he's going to bring up the things he liked about you too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look in the book of Revelation where it talks to the seven churches. He loved those churches. He died for those churches. He established those churches, yet every one of them he found an issue with. Amen? Amen? If you think you can find a church that don't have issues, you ain't going to never find a church. Because right. we're all human and we all got issues. Amen? Amen? From the preacher down, I don't care who, you, where you go and where you look, you dig, you'll find something that stinks. Right. Amen? Amen? And we don't need to try to dig up what stinks. We need to try to focus on what gives God glory. Amen. And focus on that. And give Him glory. And make somebody feel good about being in church. Tell them how glad you are. Hug them, love them, and say, praise God you're here. Because this is His church and this is where you need to be. Hallelujah. And love them. And don't cut them to the quick every chance you get because you got ticked off about something. Amen. So he says, we all, you, you need to focus on something else besides judging your brother. You need to focus on standing in front of me. Amen. Right. I'm going to tell you what, I don't know about, I thought about this day a lot. And I don't know about y'all. But after I got to studying the Word and studying the Word and I found out that every idle word I said is going to follow me there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> every deed that I've ever done is going to follow me there. And at the judgment seat of Christ, He's going to do something to every one of us we ain't going to like too good. He's fixing to put His focus on us as an individual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-oh. How many of you like to get singled out in the crowd? Huh? How many of you would like it if right now I called your name and went over a list of stuff I don't like about you? Ooh, preacher. I might have a lot of people get up and leave. Amen? Now there's a difference between preaching the truth of the Word of God and pointing and they can't accuse and finger of people because they're not doing what you think they ought to do. Amen. This wasn't supposed to be been that long. I was supposed to skip that fast through the, all this stuff. <laughs> really. Verse 11 tells us another thing. He, verse 10 tells us I'm, you're gonna, all of us are going to stand before this judgment seat of Christ. Verse 11 says this, for it is written. Everybody say, it is written. It is. Let me tell you what. If it's written in here, it's going to happen. Right. I, can get, I can vouch for that. I know it is. It's going to happen. Verse 11 says, For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord. And he's the one that died, remember, and rose again, and he's alive forevermore. And he, he spouts off about that. I, as I live, said, Now, if you don't believe Jesus is alive now, this don't mean nothing to you. But he says, as I live, saith the Lord, what's going to happen? 
Every knee is going to bow. And to me. And every tongue is going to confess. He ain't going to have to show a big screen TV of your life. You're going to let it all run out your mouth. You're going to confess because, see, you ain't going to be able to stand before him without doing it. You're going to confess your faults. You're going to confess everything to him. And he says, so uh, every tongue shall confess to God. And we need to understand these things. Philippians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 9 and 11 uh, through 11. Paul wrote this to the Philippian church. He says, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. Who's him? Jesus Christ. He's exalted to the point that God has put him above everything. Nothing, nothing is not under him in it. Not even judgment. That's why he, we're going to be at his judgment seat. And exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That's why the name of Jesus should always be held in the highest respect. The name Jehovah in the, in the Old Testament. When Yahweh, when they spoke the word of Yahweh was a personal uh, a word they had for, for, the, for the Father that they would speak it with such reverence that it was hardly ever uttered because they were revered it so highly. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what. Jesus, <laughs> that name is greater than Yahweh. Amen. That name is greater than Jehovah. That name is a name that's above every name that you can name. There's thousands of, of names of God in the Word of God. But there's only one today that makes any difference to any one of us. And that name is Jesus. Amen. Because He is the one that suffered. He's the one that died. He's the one that rose again. He's the one that's eternally living in glory. He's the one that intercedes for me and you every day. And He is the one who will save your soul. And not only that, he is the one who will judge every one of us. So it's Paul telling us it's time to take the focus off of each other. It's time to take the focus off of what, who you don't like in the church. and what, It's time to take your focus off of all of that junk and put it where the focus ought to be. And that's on Jesus Christ. The Amen. one Amen. who has earned the right to be focused on. Boy, what, what kind of revival would we have? What kind of outpouring of the Holy Spirit would the Lord give us if we lost all focus on everything but Him? Oh, hallelujah. Man, you talked about a revival. Woo, what a great time. Let me finish reading the scripture. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, if there's a name you want to utter, utter every day, don't utter a name of someone you don't like or you want to gossip about. Utter the name of Jesus. That name will get you somewhere. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we need to do, do this. Now look in verse 12 of this scripture. This is a very uh, personal scripture to each and every one of us. And this is something I share with people all the time. Look in verse 12. So then, every one of us shall give account. Listen to this. This is part you need to underline in your Bible. Of himself. Did you hear that? Every, so every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Y'all let me tell you what. I'm going to stand before him one of these days. And I'm going to give an account for Gary Terry. I'm not going to give an account for Anita Terry. 
And I'm going to give an account for everything that I've ever done, everything that I've ever said, everything vulgar, everything filthy, all that stuff. I'm going to give an account for it. And some people say, well, you've been forgiven. All that stuff is gone. It may be. But guess what? Since I got saved, there's been more. And I ask for forgiveness all the time. And every day, Brother Troy, as hard as I try, there's something else comes up. There's something else I do. There's something else I say. There's some action that I take that I am not pleasing to God. Every day. <laughs> every day. Am I the only one? Yeah. That's why I have to pray like I do before I get in here. You don't want to hear me if I've got unconfessed sin and filth in my life. I'm going to give an account for that. And I'm going to give an account on what I preach to you. But let me tell you what. You're going to give an account on what I preach to you too. And when I preach the truth of the Word of God and you hear it and you don't react to it, you're going to give an account to that, and you're going to have to explain to him why you heard it and you decided not to obey it. Amen. I'm not going to give that account. Amen? Right. I'm not going to give an account. I might give an account for the way I raised my children, but they're going to have to give an account for what they did, not me. So he brings it down to a point where it's to each person, individual. It's a that's why us old Baptists refer to our relationship with Jesus Christ as a personal relationship. It better be personal to you. Right. Because this scatter barrel relationship that we want to have, as long as I'm better than Troy, I'm okay. As long as I'm better with the brother James back there, I'm good. Richard. It's like that man, there were two men and, and they were talking about the bear getting after them. And they, and they, and they come down to who could outrun who and, and that one guy said, I ain't got to outrun the bear, I just got to outrun you. <laughs> Y'all, that's not the way our walk with Jesus Christ is designed. That's not the way our race that we run to glory is set up. That's right. You're going to get there. If you get there, it's going to be because Jesus Christ saved your soul. Amen. And when you get there, you're going to give an account of what you did, right. not what somebody else did to you. Amen? <coughs> you're not going to be able to blame anyone. You're not going to be able to say, my daddy was mean to me. He didn't go to church. He was a no alcoholic. He didn't do right. That ain't going to fly with Jesus. Jesus is going to say, well, what did that have to do with the day I pecked you on the shoulder and tried to get you to come to me? That didn't have nothing to do with that. I want to hear about your daddy. I want to know why you didn't do it. Amen. 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 You ain't going to be able to blame your husband because he didn't go to church and he didn't do right. You ain't going to be able to blame your wife because she didn't act right and she was an old hussy. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> You're not going to give an account for that. You're going to give an account for why you, you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Amen. And so we ain't going to be able to blame you. ain't going to be able to blame the preacher. Thank you for that. But we're all going to give an account for ourselves. We ain't going to have no excuse. We ain't going to be able to blame anyone. The ground is level at that cross. And it don't make no difference whether you're rich or poor, whether you're skinny or large, whether you're tall or short, whether you're old or young, that ground is for you to me alone before the Holy God. Amen. And if you don't kneel to Jesus Christ here, you can rest assured when you get over there, you are going to kneel. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I want to kneel to Him here. I want to proclaim His greatness here. I want to tell you that this man is nothing without Jesus Christ. Amen. My righteousness is filthy before him. 
I am not perfect. I'm a sinner. But because Jesus Christ died for my sins, because he shed his precious blood, I listened to a song coming up here a while ago, and it made a remark, everything the blood of Jesus touches lives. And I'm going to give an account of what I believed about him. And so are you. Amen, brother. That ought to sober every one of us up. Mm -hmm. That ought to make every one of us quit looking at somebody beside us and start looking at our own selves. Amen. It don't matter what hubby does. It don't matter what the wifey does. It don't matter what the kid does, what daddy does, mama does. You are going to be accountable for what you do with Jesus. Why do you think Jesus says that he came to cause the father and the mother to fight and the children to proclaim and fight and argue with one another? He didn't mean he came to stir up trouble. He meant that there's going to be people in families who have no relationship with the Lord God at all. And he's going to touch some of one of them. And despite what their family believes, they're going to come to him. And it's going to create trouble. Amen. So he wants you to know today that you are accountable for yourself with that relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. Let me give you an example of this. This is an example the Lord gave me this morning that He showed me. You remember when uh, Peter uh, denied Jesus three times? Mm -hmm. And you remember how he went off and cried vicious tears because he had denied Jesus publicly? Then do you remember when Jesus rose from the dead and, and fed them on the seashore that day? And he sent word to, to all of those people to, to, for them to meet him in a certain place. And he said, and Peter. And when he got with Peter, he began to talk to Peter. Remember what he asked Peter? Peter, lovest thou me more than all these? And three times Jesus Christ asked him that. And the third time Jesus Christ asked him that, the Bible says in St. John uh, chapter 21 that it pricked his heart. Hmm. It pricked his heart. And Peter felt embarrassed by what he had done. Now, St. John tells us that there was another disciple that was following real close behind them. <laughs> the disciple that Jesus loved. It was, it was the one that had his head laying in Christ's bosom. It was John himself. And John wrote about this because he heard the conversation between Jesus and Peter. He didn't interfere. He heard. And Peter was squirming now. Because when we get under conviction of the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus, we start to squirm. You, you, you ever done that? When the Lord convicts you of your sin, you better squirm. If you don't, you're in trouble. Because you've just found out you've displeased the Holy Ghost. And He's trying to show you you've done wrong in sin before Jesus. And that conviction you feel is your cue to confess that sin and get forgiveness. Then it's over with. But Peter was squirming because Jesus had asked him three times, do you love me? And he told him three times, yes, Lord, you know I do. And every time he said, feed my sheep. And finally, when Peter had squirmed so much and wiggled so much, Look in verse 20 of this chapter 21 of John. Then Peter, turning about, sees this other disciple. 
Now remember, he's squirming because the Lord's putting some pressure on him to get right. Amen? Which also leaned on the breast, on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? That's what, what was going on when, when John laid his head in, in the Lord's breast. Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Y'all see that? Peter is wanting to take the focus of the conviction of Jesus Christ off of himself and put it on John. That's a picture of us today and how we treat people. That's why I said, as long as I can be better in trouble, I don't have to worry about nothing. That ain't what the scripture teaches us. You know what Jesus told Peter? Look at this. Jesus said unto him, if I will will that he tarry till I come, what is that to you? Oh! Listen to me. Jesus Christ don't give one hoot what you think about someone else. He's interested in what you think about him. He ain't interested in you pointing out someone else's sins to him. He's interested in you pointing out your own sins to him. He don't want you to go bow for somebody. He wants you to bow for yourself. He don't want you to confess for somebody. It don't do me any good to confess for a need. Something she got to do for herself. He wants you to confess for yourself. Amen? Amen. And we get in a lot of trouble. Because we get focused on someone else and not ourselves. Amen. Amen, brother. I'm going to make them better. And if I can make them better, that'll make me better. That ain't the way the Lord says it. He says, make yourself the best you can. I'm about to close. So this is, we are all accountable for our own soul's <laughs> salvation. Did y'all hear that? We're all accountable for our own soul's salvation. You're the only one that can come to Jesus and be saved. I can't do it for you, and no one else can either. You're the only one that can come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness of sins, and he'll do that. But I can't do that for you either. Amen. So we see things that are petty before the Lord. And I'm fixing to end this, uh, this sermon, but I've got three scriptures that I want to read you. There are a lot of things that are petty that don't make any difference. But y'all, it's amazing to me how we can make such petty issues so important and make important issues so petty. Jesus said it well about the scribes and the Pharisees. He said they could swallow a camel and choke on a gnat. Mm -hmm. We're guilty today. We can get in such a squabble over nothing. nothing something that means nothing. And yet at the same time allow an abomination of God to thrive. <coughs> in the church. Huh? <laughs> so, with all the pettiness that I've talked to you about, I want to talk to you about something that's not petty with God. And I'm going to use the Word of God so you don't think it's just me. So let's look at these scriptures real quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. I want you to listen to these words. You ain't got to turn. Jot them down. Listen to what Paul tells the Corinthians. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. I want you to listen real close. Don't be deceived with lies that you hear today that you can do anything you want to and God's going to save you anyway because He's got to. God ain't got to do Preach nothing. Amen. Right. Amen. 
God ain't the one that's got to. You are. Amen. God's already done. You have it. Now listen, let me read this. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, listen to this last statement, shall inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care what any preacher tells you. If you claim to be a Christian and you do these things and you don't feel guilt over it, you may not be a Christian. My Bible says people that live that lifestyle ain't going to heaven. I don't care what mama says, daddy says, granny says, grandpa says, or any preacher says, the word of God says they will not enter in and they won't. Right. Right. Say, well, well, that's an isolated scripture. Oh yeah? Look at this one. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. Paul speaking to the church of Galatia. Verses 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of thee which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things. By the way, that's a term that's all inclusive. They that do such things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. To those people here who do those things, who do you think you are? Did you think for one minute you're going to crawl up into heaven despite what Jesus Christ says to you? Or you think you're going to go to heaven despite what you have done? Do you think you're going to go to heaven living this lifestyle and praise God for it? Let me tell you, God don't bless a person in the pig pen. This last scripture, I'm going to close. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Y'all, these are just three I picked out. There's a bunch more of them. Read the word yourself and find out what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. Chapter 5 of Ephesians, verses 1 through 7. Listen to this. Paul admonishes these people. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. You want a reason not to live in adultery? Try because Jesus died for you. Mm -hmm. You want a reason to not fornicate? Try because Jesus died for me and I want to please him. Try it and see if that don't work for you. But, verse 3, Fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Did you hear that? We have got saints that brag on their fornication, on the lust of their flesh, on their adultery. They brag on these things. Paul says, no, that's not right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It ain't nothing. We have churches that brag on letting the homosexual agenda come in and preach. Amen, brother. Listen to me. That is an abomination to God and it is not received by Jesus Christ. I don't care what anybody tells you. I don't care what the AFCLU tells you. I don't care what the government tells you. I'm telling you what Jesus Christ says. That ought not be. Amen. Amen. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. I heard a preacher one time say, see, you ain't supposed to tell jokes. 
Absolutely crazy how you could receive that from that. He ain't talking about telling jokes. He's talking about telling filthy jokes. Right. He's talking about jokes that dishonor God and, and how, how we mimic Jesus Christ in our, in our speech and attitude and, and make up stories and, and, and things that the world finds funny, but Jesus don't. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger that's a man can't quit chasing women, by the way. But that, since I've been on the women's case a whole lot, let's go ahead and get on the men's case. If you're a whoremonger, if you can't keep your hands off of women, if you can't keep from chasing women, and you've got a wife and you don't think she's the greatest gift God ever gave you, and you think you've got to go find you another woman, you're a whoremonger. Amen? Listen to this. <laughs> For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, which is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of our God. Amen. <laughs> I might give an account for not preaching everything to you, but I ain't going to give an account for not preaching this to you. Amen. Because in our world today, our mega churches and our great preachers that had gigantic assemblies. Some of them, not all of them, preach this phony, false, fake gospel. They want numbers and they want money. They want power and they want fame. They want on TV, they want on the radio, they want on Fox News so they can ask their opinion because they think because of how many people are under their control. Let me tell you what. I will never be on Fox News. If I am, I, I don't know where I'll show up or not. But it ain't going to be because I've got you under my control. That's right. Amen. 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 I don't want that kind of credit. I want you to be under <coughs> His control. Amen. And if you place yourself under His control, I've done my part. That's right. As a pastor and a preacher. Let me ask you a question. Has the scripture said anything to any of y'all today? Have you thought about people or the things that you've said or done or situations in your lifestyle that you have just long ago kind of swept under the rug? Let me tell you what, sin swept under the rug don't get forgiven. And it always has a consequence and it'll always show up at the worst possible time. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> when's the last time you bowed your knee and just confessed to Jesus who you are and told him how much you loved him and thanked him for dying for you when's the last time you did that would you stand right now Right now, that opportunity is given to you to do just that. These altars are open. And you can come to the one who loved you so much that he died for you. The one that loved you so much that he wants you to come to him and confess to him who you are and what you've done. Would you come? I don't need to hear it. I don't need to know it. He does. By His design, by His design, He's given you a church, He's given you altars, He's given you Himself. Would you please come? Come, bow down before our holy God. Give it all to Him. Make your confession sure from your heart and receive what He has for you. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. That you have sinned so much you feel nothing. But right now the Lord's tapping you on the shoulder. He's showing you in your mind the things in your life that He's not pleased with. <laughs> Listen to Him. Come. Bow down. Give those things to Him. Maybe you're alarmed because you don't feel Jesus. That's a, that's a sad shape to be in. Come and let him 
save you. <laughs> Come and let him cleanse your heart, your soul. Let him be your God. Start that personal relationship that's real and personal, a love relationship where he can love you and you can love him back. And you can be so glad that you know now that because of him you're going to go to heaven. I wouldn't want to live a day of my life not knowing what I saved or not. I wouldn't want to live a day of it. I'd be afraid to live. Knowing or not knowing when something happened to me where I'd go. You don't have to live that kind of life. You don't have to live with that regret. You don't have to live with that shadow. Because you can come today and let Him save you and know that He's done it. Leave here totally clean, spotless, forgiven. Maybe you're here today and you're looking for a church home. And you've been waiting to hear where truth is proclaimed. And not this petty gospel that's pushed. Maybe you're here today and you'd like to be a part of this. We'd welcome you. But only if the Lord's drawing you here. It'd make us so happy. What's he telling you now? opportunity slide by. There's been a many a man and woman, child, who felt the conviction of a holy God and they rejected it. And they walked out those doors to never enter to them in again. Never to have another opportunity to make their lives right with the Lord. Don't be that person. Be the one who knows. They can say, I know. I know I'm saved. something I made them do. It's not something I asked them to do. I've been accused of that. It's not something that I do at all. It's something they do. And it's something about that. When they turn around and look at you and the Lord says, listen to the children. Amen. 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 We've got to be like one of them. Amen. Well, thank you, children. Y'all get tally along. <laughs> <laughs> Now I want my big child. Come on, <laughs> we got coming this morning, Tina Jackson, sister Tina Jackson. Yeah. Ain't, she, ain't she pretty? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we did edit that out. I'm so sorry. Tina Hill. And she says it's time for her to be a member of this church. Amen. 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 It's time. And I think so too. Amen. God's time is always the right time, isn't it? And she's felt that call. And the Holy Spirit has drawn her here. Now, who will make a motion? Amen. 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 All right. Who will make the second? Amen. You can see all that going on. <laughs> anyway, so all in favor say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All opposed say oh my. Did you hear anybody? <laughs>
You, you see her put her hand over her mouth. <laughs> Why will well, these bunchkins do that to us? Lucas used to be the world's worst about doing that. Yeah, oh my! Anyway, we're glad to have you. We're glad that God has called you to be a part of this family. And we just, we want you to know. We don't expect you to come and sit on your duff. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We expect you to come and jump in with both feet, both hands, and serve the Lord right here, okay? Amen. That you become involved in the church and the work of the church. And, and I want to tell you something about these people. at home be looking, I know. But, but I'm going to tell you what, they have beautiful spirits, beautiful hearts, beautiful souls. And I know one thing about them, they love the brethren and the sisters. And they're going to do anything in the world to help you be glad you're here. Amen? You're going to be able to call any of them anytime, and they're going to come and help you, pray for you, whatever you need, including myself. And we expect that from you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that being said, welcome. Thank you. God bless you. We're going to leave her up here, and y'all get to come around and hug on her and kiss on her if you want to. Just be, make sure you, if you kiss her, kiss her on the cheek, okay? But uh, anyway. We don't want to get too carried away, but A.D., behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, Brother James Hill's going to be standing at the door with, the, with the offering plate. We're going to take up our love offering today for uh, Vincent and Angie as they go to Houston. Y'all be in prayer for them. Uh, they leave today, and they won't be back for two weeks, and they're going to do 10 radiation treatments on him down there, so y'all be in prayer for them. <clears throat> Come around and give the right hand of fellowship to, to Sister Tina Hill and tell her how much you love her. No. Yeah. Well, State and Green, would you dismiss us? Dear Lord, we are so unworthy of all the most precious gifts that you give us. Lord, you allow us to wake up another day to share your word and to be a witness to those people who don't know about you. Lord, you give us a roof over our head and bread on our table. Lord, we are just understand all things come through you. We thank for this new member that should be a positive impact of the Lord and she is it's great that she comes to this word to serve the word. Lord, we ask that you bless each one of us. We thank you for the care and sharing the word. Lord, we thank you for the Bible for what it says. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.